Nice. British Airways, once known as the world's favorite airline. Over the decades, they've kind of fallen from their pedestal, and the fall has been rather spectacular. So, how are they like today? At least in the year 2024. Let's find out. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. And good day everyone. Willkommen in Flughafen Zurich and welcome to Zurich International Airport here in Kloten. And today I am beginning the homeward bound of my journey, which begins with a positioning flight from Zurich to London with British Airways. So it's been such a fantastic stay in Europe and I look forward to the next phase, which is the final phase um, in London as I experience for the first time what is it flying like intro Europe with uh, a legacy airline and, I, and I'm pretty eager to see what this flight offers on such a short flight between Zurich and London. So uh, let's go ahead and get this experience started and get out of this seriously freezing weather here in Zurich this morning. Let's do this. I really dislike these few words, homeward bound journey. Yep, this video was shot at the pointy end of my rather eventful trip through some of the most beautiful parts of Europe. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan. Born and bred in Singapore, I now call Australia home, and I create heaps of travel and foodie content. This trip to Zurich is a small part of a wider travel series which sees us set foot in seven countries over two and a half weeks. Our first stop was Singapore, where we went to France, and then ended up in Malta, where we'd spend most of our time in. From there, we travelled through Italy, Switzerland, UK, and finally Vietnam before returning home to Australia. So this travel series will include heaps of flight reviews, train journeys, and destination vlogs to last a few months, and they will be linked in the description below as and when they're published. If you don't wish to miss any episodes, make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell icon so you'll get notified whenever they go to air. Giving me a like will encourage me to keep content flowing. So here's a thanks because your support is very much appreciated. All right, check-in is done. Um, I, I realize they do this a lot on European flights though. When the flight is full, um, they do encourage you to check in your carry-on. Um, thankfully, my roller bag can be locked. So locked it and send it through check-in. <laughs> and all I have is my laptop bag with me. And um, yeah, so that's all done now, and we shall head to Airside. In my opinion, Zurich International Airport is one of the nicest airports I've ever been to in Europe. This structure is known as Airside Centre, which was opened in 2003. From here, passengers are then dispersed into several airside piers of A, B, and E gates. Regardless of where you're flying to, all passengers go through this beautiful portion of the airport before being segregated further down the line into Schengen or non-Schengen. If you're bound for London like me, you'd be channeled towards immigration to be stamped out of the country. Security staff in Zurich are most impressive. Besides being utterly polite, they are all multilingual. And the first question they ask as you approach is, Deutsch, Francais, Italiano, English? They then proceed to interact with you in your chosen language. The multilingual aspect of the Swiss is something I find to be very fascinating in Europe. Because many countries I've been to are mostly proudly monolingual, with perhaps English as a distant second language. Personally, I've grown up in a multicultural, multilingual family, so the Swiss way is somewhat relatable to my disposition. 
We arrived at Terminal E. It's a midfield terminal which explains why we had to get on a train. Opened in 2003, together with the Airside Center, it is entirely used by non Schengen international flights. The glassy facade is on trend with airport terminals constructed from the late 90s onwards, meaning lots of natural lighting and sweeping views of the airport movements outside. Since we're in Terminal E, we also mingle with passengers departing on long-haul flights with Singapore Airlines, United, Thai Airways, Cathay Pacific and Swiss International. Overall, I am a fan of Zurich International Airport. Besides looking aesthetically very pleasing, the management of human traffic from one point to another is just so easy, efficient and organized. Main Aussie capital airports surely have a lot to learn from the Swiss. It is so cold in the Aero Bridge. I can see my own breath. As the flag carrier of the United Kingdom, British Airways has a short haul fleet comprising completely of Airbus A319, A320, and A321 aircraft. Today, we're getting on board Golf Echo Uniform Uniform Delta, an Airbus A320 which first flew in March 2002 making her just over 22 years old at the time of writing. Depending on the flight, BA's Airbus A320 has a capacity between 177 to 180 passengers. They are all configured with a 3x3 economy layout, with business class separated by a moving divider. On today's flight to London, the first 8 rows are designated business class, so the middle seat has been blocked off as they do within Europe. This is me trying to squeeze into a regular seat on board this European configured Airbus A320, which was challenging to say the least. The pitch is a frightening 30 inches but it really felt way less than that. There are USB-A ports located beneath the seats in front of you. This single tray opens up and although it can be moved backwards, I could not do it because of the space constraints. In-flight service for economy class intra-Europe is purely buy on board, which is in line with most legacy carriers. Prices are rather steep though, so just keep that in mind. While air vents are installed, it was strangely missing from my row. Seat bags have this movable headrest for added comfort, and the recline is very minimal. I think Jetstar would be very proud. Overall, I think our thick winter clothes made this claustrophobic environment more pronounced. Later in flight, when I removed my coat, it really felt heaps better. Taking off from runway 28, this flight was going to be a quick one. We turned right to intercept an airway which took us on a northwesterly flight path over France. We coast out over the English Channel and our arrival flight pattern included a dogleg maneuver for air traffic sequencing before landing in Heathrow on runway 27 right. Completing this flight in 1 hour 11 minutes clocking a total distance of roughly 780 kilometers. On this two and a half week trip through Europe, I was really looking forward to this flight on BA because the reputation of the cabin crew of this large legacy airline precedes itself. Yeah, and hence the never-ending jokes about them being... Piss off! 
and I last flew BA back in 2017. They were, well, very... So needless to say, I was very eager to put them to the test today to see if there is any difference post-COVID. Even though there is a buy on board menu, water and two packets of snacks are actually given as part of the fare you've paid. This is most appreciated, but I decided to go for a cup of tea on top of this. Meanwhile, the crew were hard at work to make sure everyone gets taken care of on this extremely short flight. As I reached out with my card to pay for my tea, my Australian issued card was strangely rejected by the POS device. We tried again, and unfortunately I got no joy from the machine. Mystified, the flight attendant looked at me, smiled, and in her own words, told me, don't worry about it. She then gave me an extra packet of Belgian chocolate bickies for the inconvenience. How's that for service? Our other in-flight purchases included a box of chips and a packet of olives. Did you know I never really ate olives until I moved to Australia? For some reason, I never really liked them. It must be the Aussie air. Now I have olives in almost all my salads. I grind them into little bits and mix them into mashed potatoes. Or I just eat them on its own like that. It's strange really but I still cannot bring myself to like Vegemite. But that's another story for another day. For now, I suppose we make do with keeping ourselves entertained on this short flight by purchasing stuff we would not normally buy from the in-flight menu. In today's aviation climate, there are very few European legacy carriers who can still have such a large global reach. These airlines need to find relevance in an industry which is changing in a way which is not necessarily in their favour. So you either merge to form a larger conglomerate or you continue the way you do on your own and eventually die. Large global European airlines are only a handful. KLM, Air France, Lufthansa and British Airways. And these airlines are by themselves a part of a larger group of strategically formed airline groups which continue to trot along to compete with their often shinier and more modern Asian and Middle Eastern counterparts. British Airways are themselves part of the IAG, International Airlines Group, which consists of Iberia, the flag carrier of Spain. Over the years, we've said goodbye to many of these large European carriers like Olympic, Sabina, Swiss Air, and more recently in 2021, the Alitalia story ended. Air Malta also flew its last flight in March 2024, and we now have Scandinavian Airlines on the brink of collapse. So is there a future for the likes of British Airways? Yes, but on very thin ice. You see, their in-flight products are frequently very outdated, and even with the introduction of a new business class suite on their long-haul aircraft, the product is more evolutionary than revolutionary. Their first-class product is becoming increasingly irrelevant because while it is good, there are other airlines with a far better product. And with London being such a prominent and prestigious destination for many of these airlines the globe over, British Airways needs to distinguish their products even more than ever because just selling the We're British tagline is becoming very grey and what does that even mean anymore? I know in-flight service experience is very personal and subjective. And the numerous jokes about how haughty the flight attendants are at British Airways must have come from somewhere. Because there's no smoke without fire. I've had my fair share of indifferent service from BA over the years on long-haul flights. And I put it down to jet lag. Especially on the Australian flights, these crew members would have been awake and working for a very long time with little rest. So there has to be some leeway given. That being said, the team serving us on this short flight between Zurich and London were all very cheerful and had that extra spring in their step. The service recovery for my POS mishap was done without ever missing a beat and that extra packet of bickies was much appreciated. 
intra-European flights these days are incredibly bare bones, even on full service carriers. So we appreciate whatever little beam of light shining through what can be a dreary scenario of a one-hour flight on a cramped, narrow-body Airbus A320. With that said and done, it's time for us to prepare for arrival into London's Heathrow Airport. Well guys, this is London Heathrow and I made it to my hotel at Terminal 4. I'm staying at the Holiday Inn Express where I will be here overnight and tomorrow I make my very long journey back to Australia with a 15 hour layover in Ho Chi Minh City. Well anyway, so that was my flight with uh, British Airways for you. Um, a very short flight between Zurich and London. What do you think? I mean, have you flown them on these short European flights before? Let me know in the comments because I'm pretty eager to hear from you. So in the meantime, I've chucked details of my Instagram on your screen right now. So hit me up there. Chuck me a follow so you can actually see where am I traveling to in real time. It also gives you an idea of the type of videos that will be coming up on my YouTube channel. So in the meantime, take care all of you and I will see you for my next one. Bye.